After two years in early access, finally, Everspace 2 is out in full. No half-baked bits, bots and alphas like some sort of a half-baked loser. However, as we've seen in the last past two years, some special brains can release something and call it a full release, but it can be as underdeveloped as a fourth trimester fetus sharted out by a careless company. Well, as a surprise, Everspace 2 is not that kind of a slot. Instead, it's good. Like, really good. It's a space combat game with an open world and even some trading and what generously can be called uh, mining. But, make no mistake, calling it a true space sim is like calling a $2,000 spaceship JPEG a good and smart developer-supporting investment. Though, nevertheless, Rockfish has managed to build, test, optimize and release a full game in five years of development, and most of all, make it fun. And unlike the overbloated Star Citizen, it didn't need a half a billion dollars to make it look good and fun. Unlike Elite Dangerous, it actually has a story and actual cool side quests. Unlike their fellow German colleagues in Egosoft with their X4, Everspace has an actual UI that's not a bureaucrat's wet dream. Unlike Star Citizen, again, it managed to also release more than one star system in less than 10 years. And unlike No Man's Sky, the space dads won't be repulsed by the constant visual waterboarding of oversaturated colors. And yet, I still sense that they will find some reason to call Everspace a children's toy game. Unlike their super serious grown-up spacey ship toy game, right? Well, hey kids, do you want some drugs? Oh, sorry, I don't have any, but I have something better! Patreon! Yes, that makes videos happen! Well then, like the purest powdered snow, let's inhale an overdose! Story then. Much like nearly all space sims, the story is attempting to recreate one of the three basic types. Star Wars, really bad kind of Star Wars, and Ocean's Eleven. Well, Everspace basically is the latter. Now, while I'd like to pretend that the story matters, I haven't really ingested enough of my ass gases to do that yet. Basically, you progress through the story by willingly assembling a part of a team with all manner of zany characters, and then forcefully kidnapping the rest in order to escape the North Korea, I mean the demilitarized zone between the Space Koreas. Overall, it's a fun, well-written small story that is utterly meaningless. Yet, you still can follow it after months of being away. I should know, I picked up my old save from back before the release, and didn't miss a beat. The cast of characters is quirky and interesting without going overboard. Now, what stood aside from surprisingly nice and simple writing was voice acting. They should have invested in the future. Gold. Do you know where I can find him? Any business that's sinking usually moves to the lower decks before abandoning ship completely. Now try my luck in the lower levels. Gold luck with that. Really? New catchphrase. Walk the plank. <laughs> this you game, know, man. Oh my god. Oh, Rockfish, you're just having a bit too much fun on this one. Oh. You know, from a German developer, this is uncharacteristic. I frankly expected another X4 with every character sharing the same brick for a face and the personality. But this has humor? Unglaublich! Visually speaking though, hits keep on coming as well. Running on the magical space that's known as Unreal 4 engine, Rockfish proved that you don't need to pretentiously fart sniff till you overdose on methane. That is, make a custom engine with custom tech that takes fucking decades to build to make a pretty and well-functioning game. <coughs> though in a typical space combat game fashion, Everspace is quite colorful. Not to the nightmarish LSD tripping levels of No Man's Sky, but it can get noticeable if you're craving something more realistic. As for the spaceships, the bread and butter for some space games. And gamers too. Here I gotta disappoint you once more and remind, this is a space combat game. This means that it's arcadey as fuck and with that also comes a certain uh, box-based designs. Every ship is a box, a snubbed, misshapen atrocity that barely resembles the thing that it was inspired by. Much like pogs. Sure, some people find them fun and cute, but fundamentally you're just enabling crimes against nature. Unless, of course, you're in a camp chihuahua, in which case you should be castrated on spot. Still, when I ask developers about the inspiration for the game, well, surprise, surprise. Oh, come on! <laughs> Oh, that's great. Though the problem with visuals ends up being that it's just hyper-generic. 
Seriously, take the most iconic ship Everspace has and compare it to some random Unity or Unreal Asset Store ship. Mm-hmm, yeah, I think so. Well, there is a little bit of a difference, and that is that they have ultimates for every ship. This merc. But what surprised me was the UI. From day one in early access, you could feel that the foundation for Everspace 2 was really solid and good, unlike some unmentionables. Though the UI feels like Beijing, crowded and homogenized. The tooltip information, snappiness of every transition is so well refined, you can genuinely feel that whoever worked on it knew exactly what not to do and how to make things easy to understand. Similarly to originally dangerous UI, but more homogenous. Well, when it comes to the menus, you can already sense and tell it's a, it's a smaller game, sure, and everything seems to be more arcadey, or, well, you can say there's an inspiration from uh, the... <coughs> Uh, more modern AAA look with the boxes and all that stuff. <coughs> Destiny! <coughs> God damn it. Funny that I mentioned that, because you see, after asking developers, it turns out that UI designer was <coughs> um, inspired to copy paste the style. Now, while it works, it also is really, really stupid. See, every developer who attempts to copy Destiny's UI is basically lobotomized. No, it's not good! And just cause Destiny is making your executives jealous of how much money, blow and bitches Bungie is rolling in, copying the worst part about Destiny will not give you the same results, dammit! But hell, even if you're gonna copy Destiny, do it right! As you open up the menu for the loadout, do you even see your spaceship? Nope! And the space games are all about us fucking spaceships! It's like the space dad cracked cocaine! Though, then again, I probably shouldn't complain too much, because the alternative German take on the good main menu is this. So then, UI is snappy and really easy to understand. Though, piloting a spaceship will probably take you 10 years and 4 PhDs to decipher how to even lift off, like most of the space sims. Actually, no! Thanks to the space game experimental phase in early 2000s, when everyone was dishing out a horrible idea and execution after a horrible nightmare, modern space combat games have come to realize that slamming ketamine for kicks before work is a pretty terrible idea. That is to say, we have come to some sort of semblance of understanding how controls and mechanics should work, much like what FPS games did in 90s. Space combat games should be arcadey and very simple, which Everspace 2 is. But first, for turbo nerds in the crowd, what are space combat games? Well, they are a subsection of space sim genre that you can learn more about in here. But basically, these games, like all failing relationships, know only one thing will solve all the problems. Domestic violence! I mean, combat. You need to break a wall? Boulder punch it. You need to convince a trader to give you a discount. Shoot it! You need to craft a cute present for your space grandma. Fist it! Oh my god, I think I've gone too far in a few places. However, unlike most space combat games, Rockfish have chosen to expand the game. Still single player, but go with an open world. Now, with that also comes this soiled underpants problem. You try to make the hole too wide and some muscles just stop working. So now, while you're traveling in hyperspace, you can see some random unknown signal sources pop up, which you can go and investigate. But okay, well, you got interest points, what can you find in them? Ah, loot, of course! Yes, that's right, Everspace 2 is a looter-shooter open-world space combat game. As you complete missions and kill baddies, you level up and gain a few stats here and there. You also find new weapons, armor and other crap that you can sell off, and continue improving your character with all sorts of minor perks, or buy a different ship altogether. And though you can go trading, picking up cheap commodities in one place and selling them off somewhere else for great profit, like Rebel Galaxy Outlaw, these games are not true space sims. Again, for more information on how they are segregated within the genre, go check it out on the video there. But that's not a bad thing. What most of all matters to me is that every aspect of Everspace feels well developed and refined. In fact, it's so well done that you can pick up and play the game right away without learning too much about how to pilot precisely, or which buttons do what, or how to even turn on the seat warmers like most overbloated true space sims do. However, yes, this simplicity comes at the cost of adeptful mechanics. Once you're past the first 10 minutes of the gameplay, there's very little variety to what you'll be doing or how you'll be doing it. So yeah, it's kind of the curse of the arcade combat. 
Now, as for the developers, well, it's odd. It's odd to see Germans, of all people, being this quite passionate, genuine, and active. Even in my little inquiry about the game, development process, and more, they went into details that didn't feel fake, pandering, bored, or, well, PR. It's hard to describe it, but the 30 or so developers from mostly Germany and other places too seem to possess this little spark of awesomeness that I rarely get to see in this industry. And that too gets reflected in their work most of all. After the eye-catching and very promising early access, unlike some, they didn't rest on the laurels or empty hype with aimless stupefied faces regurgitating more content without a seeming plan in place just for more attention. They shed the disgusting early access beggar clothes to become a real game, and it's commendable. It's such a rarity nowadays, especially in space game circles, to see this. So thank you, Rockfish. Thank you for making not only a good game, but also proving that you can make a game properly today, releasing it without the stupid ifs and or buts. I'm happy to have another game I can point to whenever somebody brings out the early access or betas or alphas bullshit arguments and that game development is so fucking impossible that you need a 2000 IQ with gazillions of dollars just to move an inch. Oh, and as for the post-release, well, Rockfish are bringing some more free and paid content later down the line, but most of all, they're focusing right now on console releases this summer. As for the enthusiast Space Dad crowd, yes, the game supports joysticks too. However, VR, unlike Everspace 1, which had it added later down the line, developers told me, well, they're not gonna work on VR this time around. It's a bit disappointing, but nevertheless, fair enough. So then... Oh fuck, I forgot! The game has a demo! How the hell did I forget about this? It's so damn rare, but nowadays more often you can actually have playable demos for the games before you buy them. And you can actually play a part of the game to actually experience it. Rather than relying on some videos or some random internet idiots like me. Go try it out yourself. Bravo, Rockfish! Bravo! You've made a good fucking game! Thank you!